Let's take a look at how I troubleshoot non-convergent models. So what is my workflow? A model can fail to converge in multiple different ways and it is useful to understand uh, different techniques for troubleshooting. But when you start troubleshooting, you have to start with one technique followed by another technique. So which one of these techniques uh, that I've covered here or in this set of videos, I would go for first and which ones are the kind of like last resort techniques. It really boils down to two different uh, factors. One is how easy the diagnostic is to implement and the second is how likely the diagnostic is to give uh, me some useful information about the particular problem. We also need to understand that, that the workflow differs between different contexts. And the most important context is this. Is this something that I've been working on, my model, or is it perhaps a graduate student who's just starting uh, doing structural ecosystem modeling or some other kind of statistical modeling and comes to me with a model that doesn't work? I do different kinds of models than students and I also do different kinds of pro errors than students. For example, uh, I rarely specify models that are not identified because I've, I've seen so many models that I, I know in the specification stage that some models can be estimated whereas others can. Someone with less experience might have an identification issue. So quite often uh, these problematic models from beginners are actually models that can't be estimated because they're not identified. And these are uh, my, my problems tend to be more about data and estimation compared to models. And uh, that kind of like background information tells me what to take a look at first. Another context is uh, what information is already there. Is there some kind of warning? Does the warning relate to identification or does it relate to a uh, uh, computational problem? And then is there any output? If there's output, are there standard errors? Are there estimates? So uh, what is already available? What is the background of the model? These uh, affect the workflow. But let's just take a look at the general workflow that I might apply when there is a student that comes to me with a model that doesn't work. The first thing that I would do is, is to read and understand the warning. And uh, there is, uh, if I don't, haven't seen the, the warning before, I would take a look at my statistical software's user manual that explains the problem. I would put it to Google and see what I find. Sometimes they are, the warning is something that even if someone explains it to me, it might be more difficult, it might be difficult to understand. So there's a trade-off. Do you want to spend uh, a week trying to understand what a warning means or do you want to proceed with the diagnostics? This of course depends on, on your mileage. If you have lots of experience, then warnings are more useful than if you have very little experience. Like if you have no idea what Hessen matrix is, then a warning like Hessen is not positively definite is not a very useful thing for you to, uh, to start looking at. So the next thing is that I would check the standard errors. If there is a missing standard error or standard errors that is very large, that is an indication of an identification problem. And identification problems are more severe than computational problems because if a model is not identified, then it cannot be estimated no matter what or it can be with some qualifications and you really need to understand if you are, what are the consequences if you uh, decide to go with a model where some parameters are not identified but others are. Then uh, I would do eyeballing. I would draw a path diagram of the model and eyeball for identification are do all latent variables have scales? Are there any, do all uh, uh, correlated errors or bidirectional paths? Do they have proper num number of instrumental variables? Are all uh, factors, do they have at least two loadings? Is it possible that two, two indicator factors are not identified because of not uh, having sufficiently close association with other factors? Are all single indicator factors, error variances fixed to certain values? That kind of things uh, that, that I know must be true for the model to be identified. Then uh, I would do starting values. I would print out the starting values and if there are any very large values uh, or any values that look unreasonable, I would adjust them and then just try if that gets the model to work. 
Then I would print the Hessen and, and gradient if the model does not converge. If it does converge, then I would print the variance, covariance matrix of the estimates to look if two parameter estimates are very highly correlated, either positively or negatively. And that indicates that there is a potential identification issue uh, uh, concerning those two parameters competing for the same variance or covariance in the data. Then I would uh, try different optimizers. So if an optimization problem, optimizer fails, maybe some other optimizer uh, can help. This is something that is uh, that often does not help, but it is very easy to do. So it's in my toolbox. Then uh, there is uh, the, strate the strategies that require a bit more work. So if I can't get the model to work, then I would start looking at, okay, so I have a, there, is there a simpler model that I can get to work? If I have a model with, let's say, 10 factors, I would split it into two uh, five factor models and then analyze, estimate both separately. Can I get those to work? If so, then I can get those estimates to be starting values. Or I can do this uh, model building strategy. I might use uh, five indicators, if that, uh, five factors. If that works, then I add sixth factor. If that works, I add seventh factor. And I try to understand the problem by looking at at which point does the model converge start to fail when I move from simple model to more complex model. And finally, this requires the most work. It is not a lot like a rocket science, but re requires some effort. I would do empirical identification checks where I analyze the uh, estimate the model using uh, randomly set starting values. And that will uh, tell me which parameters are not identified and which might be identified. So this is my workflow of these various tools. And I adjust the workflow quite a bit depending on the background of the problem.